I think records is one of the most personal things people can do. It's one of those things where you sit there and someone just bleeds out their emotions with you. And then you sit there and you help them pick the blood up and put everything back in and go like stitch them up and you're like, okay, you survived this song. <laughs> you move to the next one and it all happens again. <laughs> I'm Robert Carranza. I'm a record producer, if you want to call it that. <laughs> We're at the Solar Power Plastic Plant. It's a studio that I have here with Jack Johnson, who's an artist I work with, and we both own this place. And uh, it's a solar powered studio in Los Angeles, California. So, here at the Solar Power Plastic Plant, we have you know, we could get it over to whatever we want. We, you know, we, we're, we make records here, and we ended up going with this SSL AWS. It's a, it's a small format console, but it really is an SSL. The thing here is we're solar powered, and to bring in a 48 input SSL and to, you know, put the racks in the other room where we have to put this air, extra air conditioning in, it just didn't make sense. Um, for one, the heat distribution, for once, eco-friendly, you know. So we went with the smaller format, the amount of output it, it puts out for power is nothing. We have um, about 10 solar power uh, panels on top of the roof. Um, we don't have battery backup, but pretty much all the time it's generating power, we're feeding back into the grid, and our, you know, our electricity bill is probably, you know, $20 every four months or something like that. It's a little funny to get to, but on a clear day, it looks amazing around here. Unfortunately, on a clear day, you can't see the beach because there's all everything in the way. But these are solar panels, and. Uh, this is what powers the building. I've been in the business for about 25 years now, and most of the records I've done have ranged from Jack Johnson to Marilyn Manson, when everything in between from Los Lobos to, I've done film scores, I mixed the film score for 300 and many other movies. You know, I started with like a metal scene back in the 80s, and you know, that was it. And you know, at that point you were kind of like, metal, that's all you really wanted, but you know, you were secretly listening to like your brother's, you know, GBH collection, you know, <laughs> or, or you'd listen to, you know, my mom was listening to Santana and then my other brother was listening to oldies and you were secretly listening to them going like, oh, those are awesome songs. And then I realized that that's really what I got from music was, didn't matter the genre, a good song is a good song. I'm here, we just got racks, uh, API. This is usually an API rack that has a bunch of different stuff in it. It's all being, um, um, fix at the moment. That's the thing about working, it's like you never get a chance to something to fix. So right now I'm mixing, a, mixing it somewhere else, so I took stuff that it was broken in to get it fixed. This is what's called a curve bender. It's actually um, an old EQ uh, redone new from uh, Chandler from the old a uh, Abbey Row um, 12345, as it says here. EQ, this is like the mastering version, um, and it's like the dark side of the moon, so on and so forth. Uh, console EQ that they, they made a, a rack mount version for. Uh, this is a Manly Mew, very famous, uh, very variable compressor. Uh, Manly makes it. Um, uh, older style compressor, like Fairchild, and so on and so forth. And these are again another Chandler, uh, again, Abbey Road. Uh, style compressor, which used to be called the Altec, and this is their new version that they they just put out, and it sounds incredible. It has very unique features that um, uh, no compressor has. It has these like hold functions where you send audio through it, and if you hit the hold, it just it literally just holds the audio there, um, and it's a program dependent hold. So 
With those, uh, this is an old tube tech stereo compressor. Again, another Chandler. And then here we got um, Shadow Hills. This is um, the mastering compressor, uh, very versatile. Um, has different transformers in it, so you can have a nickel, an iron, or a steel. I still feel like a child when I get a band set up and we're ready to go, and you know that butterflies start kicking in, and you're like, okay, we're we're about to do something. And um, we did a, a live record here with uh, the last G Love and the Special Sauce record when they reunited for their 20th year anniversary, and it was all live: live upright bass, live drums, live guitar, live vocal. Lucinda Williams was in there on one track. David Hidalgo came in and played live, and it was like he, you know, had so much fun. It was like, you can't beat that. This room's an interesting room for a few reasons. Number one, everything in this room is recycled. This wood from the, on the roof is recycled. The panels were made from recycling. These gobos were made from recycled material. And a couple studios at the time when we built this place were going, were going under. And I went in and asked them if they would mind if I take some of their cables and some of the stuff that they were, that most of the time they just trash and people just redo. And for us, it was kind of like being that we wanted to be able to have less footprint in what we do, we built everything with recycled material. So, I mean, this, floor was originally in the entrance of this place and now it's on the ceiling. <laughs> uh, we have natural light which most studios don't have uh, just because we could turn the lights off during the day and you can still feel like there's light you know. And then um, inside the walls themselves uh, is a form of denim and it, it's the insulation inside the walls and it's uh, it's actually kind of like a uh, corning the corning that you would put in a studio, but there's no toxins in it, and it, this place eventually were to go down. It's all natural, and it would decompose. Mm -hmm. I always learn the best lessons from musicians. You know, uh, I did mix this, um, Los Lobos live record at the Fillmore. And it was really funny to, to do it because, you know, I was in the truck and we did two nights and it was, you know, both shows were great, you know, it was incredible. And then I, the guys went on tour and I came back here to, uh, to mix and, um, you know, I was actually at this other studio mixing at the time before we had this place and, and you know, I'm on this 100 input SSL and I was like, everything sounded great and I'm so excited. I send the mixes to the, to the guys and then the band calls me and they're like, did you listen to your rough mixes? And I was like, no. And they're like, listen to that rough mix and call us back. And I was like, okay. And I heard it instantly. I had went too far. You know, I was like, oh. <laughs> Told the assistant, unplug everything, pull everything down, we're starting over. And he was like, what? I and mean, we had been working a week. And within 30 minutes of, I had it back where I had it, sent it over, and they're like, that's it. And that's things that you learn from musicians, you know, or you really have to pay attention to musicians. It's funny when you set something up and you start working on something. Sometimes you never hear like, oh, that sounds amazing. You know, you just, they come in and they're like, cool, let's go play. And then you're like, oh, do you like the sound? And, you know, it's like, they don't mince words sometimes. It's just like, yeah. if they didn't like it, they would tell you. So you got to take it as like, oh, they're good. They're happy with everything. Cool. You move on. And that's great. It's like every time I have a question about anything, it's like I, I lean on the musicians to tell me, you know, because it becomes a thing where uh, it's not my personality that needs to come through. It's theirs, you know. So I try to be invisible as much as I can whenever I'm working on a record. This came out of an old studio in Ali called Imagine. Um, we have two of them. We have one here and one in Hawaii, the like same, exact same one. And I got my little hi-fi set up here. You know, when I mix, primarily, you know, I'm mixing on this most of the time because this is kind of what most people hear music from. You know, uh, these are like these little hi-fi speakers that a company made for a little bit and then they stopped making them. Um, I bought like, I don't know, they gave me like 12 pairs or something. So I still have them. And they work, and a little 
little tube amp that powers them. You know, most people don't realize, like, when you make a record, no one's ever going to hear it in these real high expensive speakers, you know. They kind of, uh, they're hearing it on their phone, they're hearing it in their car. There's, it's, it's a different format. So this kind of is that go-between of like hi-fi and lo-fi, you know. If it sounds good on these speakers, it usually sounds good everywhere. It was, it's hard because I come from a tape machine world where you take a big piece of tape and throw it on a reel and align the machine for it. And you know, there was techniques you used to do back then that of over-biasing, under-biasing, and you know, doing you know, window edits that you know, nowadays like, no one knows how to do that. I mean, if anything, you're cutting to tape for a tone and then you dump it in, and then now you have this tone that you, you know, everyone, really what people are doing is really romanticizing this thing. You know, tape is a flawed format. It always has been. Uh, equalizers and compressors have always been something to fix something that was wrong. Uh, so it's a misnomer on like how those things actually fix something. They were really to correct something. And if you get it right, you don't need to correct it. So then the problem you have is you have to have this machine that has to be 100% at spec all the time, which is not the case. You know, it's a, it's, it's a tape machine is an electrical piece of equipment that, you know, varies. And so it was always a flawed, flawed medium. Um, I love it. I still do love it. But now I like to put something down that when I hear it, it comes back the same. And you know, that true, there's this, that debate of analog versus digital. You know, uh, it's great to have that debate, but I've always li likened it to being like, you know, you take this great 4K video or, you know, of the Grand Canyon, and you're like, wow, that looks incredible. And then you, that's the digital thing. And then you take this great 35 millimeter camera with great lenses and you take this picture and you're like, whoa, that's a whole other perspective, you know. But standing on the edge of the Grand Canyon is really where it's at.